Hey, what's up, everyone? John here from the Cast and Spirit Podcast, and happy 2019. I hope you had a great holiday and an even better new year. Truth be told, I actually passed out at 11 p.m. and decided to wake up and bring in the new year without a hangover this time. So very nice start to the new year, and I hope yours was amazing as well. I wanted to start this New Year right by having Dustin back on for one more episode. He put on a clinic for all those who want to take their pole spearing game to the next level and try it in the blue water. He goes into everything you need to know, pure deep dive, and couldn't say thank you enough. And we're going to be changing up future episodes a little bit. I'm not going to be doing so many during the week. I just don't have the bandwidth at this time, but I will be doing more long form interviews. So I hope that is okay with you guys. And if you decide that you like the smaller episodes, just let me know, and I'll try and figure something out. You know, just go to John, J-O-N, at castandspear.com, shoot me an email, or go to the site. There's a contact page. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the podcast so you never miss a future episode. And let's welcome back Dustin McIntyre. So 15 years ago, you know, folks going out into the blue water and taking tuna, yellowtail, wahoo that with a pole spear unheard of okay now it's happening you have people crossing over and using a pole spear the gear the technology is there that's been tested and proven you have world records of wahoo world records on amberjack world records on yellowtail uh, world records on Dor- on dorado even dog dog tooth tuna taken with pole spear amazing Okay. A stick and rubber band has its limitations, but rigged correctly, I can sh- I could show you how you could use it to successfully uh, take pelagic fish. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. About five or six years ago, I spent a lot of time designing and r- a rigging system for pole spear with the sole purpose of breaking that stigma that, that pole spears are only for small fish. Okay, so with Gatku, we have we have some accessories and rigging that make it possible to use a stick and rubber band. You uh, taking taking pelagic fish, taking larger blue water fish, and so I'm going to share that rigging with you today. Um, this is rigging that is that has taken many world records over the past five years. We've had some failure rates with stuff that we've tried in the past, and a lot of success with what we now have. So we've already done the testing for you, and I'm sharing with you the most successful rigging for blue water using a pole spear. So I might touch on this topic in another podcast, but I could give you probably 10 reasons why a pole spear is, is a better tool in many situations versus a traditional spear gun. One example would be you could shoot it multiple times on one breath. Right? I, I can't do that with a spear gun. It's just too difficult to load, takes too long, and it wouldn't be a safe thing to do while, while breath holding at the same time. But none of those reasons has anything to do with being able to shoot further, being able to have more shooting distance. The fact is that the pole spear is a shorter range, which makes shooting fish that are more elusive or want to keep their distance more of a challenge. You could think of this as the archery or bow hunting approach to big game hunting. And if you think about land hunters, some of them who have been in the game for years uh, with rifles cross over into bow hunting. They want to move or graduate into something that's more challenging um, more fulfilling to them. So you could think of, of pole spears in one way like that, where it's more of a challenge, it's more primitive, especially when you're dealing with bigger game. It really is its own class, okay? Um, and then there's other people who will never pick up a spear gun. They start with a pole spear, and they just they believe in keeping it simple and primitive, and they will never go to any higher form of technology, if you will, right? And they'll just stick with that stick and rubber band. So it's a fact using a pole spear is more challenging than using a spear gun. No one's going to refute or argue with that. And that challenge only increases when you start to graduate into blue water or or the pelagic fish. For one, these types of fish, they might be a larger target, but they stay much further away from you. Usually they're much faster. Uh, Fish that are seen out in the open where you're going to be taking some longer shots and you're going to be relying on a pretty significant rigging system in order to be successful at landing these fish, okay? Another reason why it's more challenging, you know, blue water versus reef hunting is because you could spend all day looking for these pelagic fish, whatever they might be, and you might only have one sighting. Sometimes you have none. And so 
your adrenaline kicks in at that moment once you see them. And you don't perform the same when that adrenaline kicks in. You get too excited. Sometimes you, you shoot way too early or you just you just mess up. Reminds me of when I saw my first Wahoo. Coming up from a 40-foot dive and thinking some barracuda was coming towards me, but really it was a Wahoo. And it was a, I, I could not believe my eyes. I mean, it was coming right at me. And I think I took a shot from like five feet away and missed because I, I was just so excited and I wasn't in my normal state of you know, relaxed hunter mode, you know, just, wow, this, this has never happened to me before. This is my moment. Lo and behold, it didn't work out. Uh, as with anything, you know, whether it's with a spear gun or a pole spear, blue water hunting is going to, is going to require some practice. It's going to be an acquired skill. So I get the question all the time from folks who buy their, their first pole spear or looking to buy their first pole spear. And that is, what is the shooting range on this eight footer? And I'll say, well, extend your hand out as if you're holding the pole spear loaded. Um, and if the pole spear is eight feet, including the head from from butt to tip, then you could you pr that's probably a shooting range from that hand that's extended out. Okay, um, so that's I don't know maybe ten feet away from your body, something like that. But that's not necessarily your penetrating range. I would never go and shoot a yellowtail eight feet away from my hand with an eight footer. You know, if I was to take a shot like that, I might use a ten footer. And I'm extending my shooting range out an additional two feet, which is also giving me more penetrating range. Because your penetrating range, when I say that, I mean the range at which it still has enough kinetic energy to go through the fish. Because you're not successful until you actually penetrate the fish. So if you are if you expel all that kinetic energy and it's at the very end of its travel, you're likely just going to tattoo the fish rather than go through it. And I've seen it happen too many times. The solution is to either get closer to the fish or use a longer pole spear with a longer draw which allows you more shooting and penetrating range. So my suggestion, usually less is more, but when you're dealing with blue water fish, you need the shooting distance and you need the penetrating range. So a 10 footer, for instance. So you have the Gatku 10 footer, which comes with the blue water package on the website. The 10 foot range is about 10 feet from your hand extended out. There are ways and methods to even extend that range even more, but for the most part, the longer the spear, the longer the travel, the more range you're going to have. The other length to consider when using a pole spear for blue water is the extension that you have on your pole spear in front of your loaded hand. So essentially what that does, the longer that extension is, the longer the, or the more amount of pole spear that you have in front of your loaded hand, the further your body is away from your target. That's really what's going to keep, keep the fish at a distance is your body. You could uh, shove a stick in front of their face, probably not going to be too timid from that, um, as long as you're moving it naturally. But if you're trying to get your body closer to them, that's where they're going to sense a predator or they're going they're going to sense some danger and keep and keep their distance and maybe be, become less curious and and start to steer away. So the longer the extension in the front, the better. So the, the Gaku hybrid has kind of a built-in two foot extension, and then you have a foot of actual tip in front of that. So you have three feet of pole spear in front of your loaded hand on a 10 footer. If you were to look at a blue water spear in the Crist product line, which is a much more robust, much heavier hitting spear, that's a, a Zeus, which is a nine foot breakdown spear and has the option of a 18, 24 or 30 inch uh, injector rod, which is you know an extension in, that will hold your slip tip. So obviously with blue water, like I said, the longer, the better there. You want all that extension in front of your in front of your hand, which keeps your body further away from your target when you when you take the shot. It closes the gap, so to speak, right? Whenever you increase that extension from your body, you're able to take that shot a little bit closer to the fish from the tip of the spear. Um, also, you're able to kind of see it. It kind of gives you some trajectory. Kind of think of it as a longer barrel gun that you could kind of look down and, and have some better aim. And then it also, at the same time, gives you some balance, right? Because you have more pole spear in front of your loaded hand, with all that pulse spear behind you, it just makes it a little bit easier to track fish. So I'd advise in a lot of applications to go longer in the front, not just blue water, just because you, you have benefits that come from it. Okay. So now that we've talked about lengths of spears that would be ideal to use in a blue water scenario, um, let's talk about rigging. Rule number one with rigging. I don't know if there's a rule number two, but this is rule number one, and you have to follow this rule number one every time, whether you're blue water hunting or not. Never attach a line, whether it be a belt reel, 
a float line or a leader line to the rear of your pole spear ever. It's going to kill all the velocity. So your pole spear is trying to travel, and if it's if it's dragging something or, or towing something behind it, it's not going to go very fast out of the gate, and it's also going to slow down very quickly. There's only one correct place to attach a leader line or a float line or your belt reel line to the pole spear, and that's the only spot of the pole spear that's not moving when it's being slung forward, and that's your band, right where your loaded hand is. Now, the, there's other parts of your band that are moving very fast, but where your hand is, your hand is a stationary object when the pole spear is being fired. If you attach there on the band itself, you're not going to affect the acceleration or, or, or velocity of the spear, if that makes sense. Let's talk about the importance of a slip tip. Okay, No one who's been in the game for very long is going to argue with the idea of using a slip tip over another style of tip for blue water hunting. Okay, When you're dealing with heavy or soft-bodied fish, your chance of landing that fish is going to increase when you use a slip tip over, say, a paralyzer or a flopper head on a pole spear. Okay, now, a paralyzer head, most of you guys know that as a three prong, which is pretty ideal for fish up to say, you know, three, four, five pounds, something like that. As soon as you can seat five pounds, you're usually graduating to what's called a flopper tip, which is a shaft with a barb that kind of opens up on the other side of the fish. The fish is still dealing with a rigid shaft and fighting that rigid shaft. Um, can open up the hole a little bit bigger on some softer bodied fish. And that makes it a little bit less ideal for blue water hunting, especially when you're dealing with an inline rig rigging system that we're going to talk about later. You don't want the pole spear to be perpendicular to the fish while it's making its run. You want it to follow behind or trail behind. So you have what's called a slip tip, which is a tip that goes through, penetrates through the fish. It's attached to a cable. And now... The cable is through the fish and the pole spear and the rig is trailing or following behind the fish and that cable can yield to the fish's movements. So instead of tearing a larger hole, it's now yielding to the fish and making greater success rate at landing that fish. Okay, So you have to have a slip tip. I mean, if you're going to be into this league of uh, or this caliber of spear fishing, a slip tip is the very essential tool. I would say, on the end of your pole spear. You don't just hold on to your pole spear after the fish is on in blue water hunting. Okay, that it, it'd turn into Mr. Toad's wild ride. You, It would not be a high success rate on the larger fish. So we need this pole spear to be tethered to something else that will allow the pole spear to, uh, to run, that will allow the, the fish to spend some energy and allow you to pull it up gradually so that the fish does not tear off, right? Everything is going to be rigged to increase your chances of landing that fish. There are different scenarios that require different actions, right? Uh, obviously, if there are sharks in there, you, you can't spend your, time, your sweet time pulling this fish up and landing it to the boat, in which case dependable rigging makes a big difference when you're pulling something up fast versus allowing it to run and, and pulling it up gradual. So you have to have the pole spear tethered. And traditionally, you would use a float and float line. That is maybe 50 to 100 feet of float line connected to a buoy behind you, okay? Um, let me also say that some people aren't using a float and float line. Instead, they're using a belt reel. It works out for some people. I don't necessarily recommend. There's a number of safety concerns there. If you ask people reel or float line, it's kind of like asking... Uh, a group of divers, whether or not they like pineapple on their pizza. Okay, you're either going to love it or you hate it. Um, the reel or float line question kind of goes back a long time. And there apparently is no right answer, but it's a really good way to start an argument among a form of people talking about spearfishing. So let's just, for, for simplicity's sake, whenever I say float and float line, it could also equate into belt reel. So there are two styles of rigging that I'm going to talk about today. Let me first say that I have started out using one style of rigging, and I no longer do it anymore. And there's big reasons why. So we'll talk about those. And then there's another style of rigging, which is available if you go to the GATKU uh, Blue Water Package. Uh, this is called an inline rigging system. And I'm going to uh, go through that and the benefits of that versus the other way. Okay? So the other way 
is called a breakaway rigging system. That's where you take the pole spear out of the equation once the big fish is on because you don't want to damage the pole spear, let's say. I started using this system maybe 10 years ago. I kind of developed it. In fact, there's a Microsoft Word art clipping here on, on castandspear.com that is actually a drawing that I made. If it looks like it's from Microsoft Word 2002, that's because it was. But it was a system that incorporated a float line that was connected to your slip tip on the end of your spear. Fish is on. You pull the, the pole spear out. You're holding on to the pole spear now, and now the fish is fighting a slip tip and a line connected to a float line. Sounds, in theory, really good, but in reality, it was as complicated and as messy as can be. And so I, I, I abandoned the breakaway rigging system. If you guys have listened to any of my other podcasts, you know that my philosophy is less is more. Um, I, you know, when we're dealing with a stick and rubber band, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible. And so when we went that breakaway rigging system route, it distracted from the whole idea of using a simple tool because it was no longer simple. It just became too many gizmos, too many bells and whistles moving in motion at the same time. For most people, it became a distraction from, from what they were doing. I did have some success with it, but it just, it just took a lot of work and it was too complicated of a mess for me to recommend to my customers. So I stopped and it was about maybe six or seven years ago where we developed what's called the inline rigging system. That's what w would be available on in the Gaku Blue Water package. So with the breakaway system, the pole spear was out of the equation. The inline system keeps the pole spear rigged. So it's, it's still part of the line, if you will, of, of the fish being tethered to your float and float line. Okay, so as I describe it, imagine it, if you will, the inline system, fish connected to the slip tip. So that you got you got your slip tip embedded or toggled on the other side of the fish, and that's pulling on usually a stainless braid, which is connected still to the front of the pole spear. So the pole spear is towing behind the fish in line. On the opposite end of the pole spear, you have your band, which is acting as a shock absorber, also connected to that band is what we call the big game bungee, which is an additional shock absorber and an extra line of, or a leader that, that would also attach to your float line. And of course, at the end of your float line, you have your float. So 50 to 100 feet of float line, that's pretty traditional. This whole thing is towing in rig behind the fish. Okay, If you are rigging, connecting to your band, that could become the weak link. So on Gaku.com, we have what's called a hardcore band. And it's the same rubber as the 9 and 10 footers of the standard bands, but the anatomy is a little bit different. Inside, we have integrated Kevlar braid. It's 400-pound test Kevlar braid. If that rubber was to fail, uh, you still have something inside of it that's going to be reliable rigging. Okay, so that, that's no longer a weak link. You always want, you want to get rid of weak links. If you're going to rig in line, the last thing that you want to do is for something to break while a large fish is on the end and you lose that fish or your pole spear or both. That's horrible. So if it hasn't been blatantly obvious to you already, I do favor the inline system over the breakaway system. So I mentioned earlier how the breakaway system was just too complicated. It was just too much for most people who wanted to hold a pole spear loaded while holding breath at the same time. Instead, we were able to use the inline system and have a lot of success with it. So you have your inline rigging where your pole spear is still in the equation. You don't have to hold onto the pole spear while you're fighting the fish. You know, the pole spear, is, it's fighting the fish for you. And all you're dealing with is the float and float line. And you're, you're bringing that fish back up to the surface. So this has worked so well. We've taken multiple world records um, and we've proven it to be worthy of, of taking even more world records. So I have a story to tell. And you know how fishing stories go. It's it's BS unless you have a picture or video to to back it up. And there is a there is a video of this actually on YouTube of my cousin Ryan dealing with a very large fish and even larger seal using the inline system. Okay. So he had whatever a Gatku 10 footer connected to a slip tip and hardcore band connected to a very long float line. And 
he had just taken what was probably going to be a world record yellowtail. You watch him gradually pull this fish up closer to the surface, and you see come into the frame not one but two very large sea, uh, seals. So on the on the East Coast, they've got shark issues. Here, a lot of times we're dealing with in uh, San Diego waters, we're dealing with seals that they associate the sound of a spear gun or they just know when spearfishmen are in the area, they associate them with, with a free meal. So they can be trouble because when they latch onto that fish, they don't let go and they dive down very deep with them and just take a lot of your gear. You could kind of think of this male seal as a 400-pound canine that could swim, okay, with real teeth and everything. They're pretty intimidating. They'll come up to you, they'll bark at you, yell at you, and you've got a lot to worry about, especially if you're dealing with a shooting line or a float line or something that's wrapped around you and they grab onto that fish. You could be in trouble real quick. So this particular seal took this 30-something pound yellowtail and just went straight down into the abyss with it. And you watch his fish, his float line, his pole spear, his float line, and he had a Rob Allen float that just went straight down. It didn't seem to uh, to slow down, and it vanished. So he pops up, yells at the deckhand that's on the boat, and you know, it dawns on him that, okay, this is a mammal. He's got to come up for air at some point. So he kind of points in the direction that the seal took off. He swims back to the boat. The boat pulls anchor and goes in, goes towards that direction. Three quarters of a mile later, true story, three quarters of a mile in that direction, they find the float, still attached to the float line, still attached to the pole spears, which is still attached to what's left of the mutilated fish, which, believe it or not, is still attached to the seal who's really struggling, trying to, trying to take the rest of his meal home with him. They end up pulling the entire rig up they end up having the you know bring them this mutilated fish on board which when it's mutilated at that point you can't register it as, as a as a record in the iusa record rule so what i think still weighed 29 to 30 pounds something like that gutted and half the head off um you know totally bled you know could, could have been a world record at the time for a pole spear but amazing story an amazing picture nonetheless but what's most most important here, the story, my, my whole point that I'm make, making is that you have this inline rigging that could withstand that kind of force. You have a force that's bringing a float down into the abyss that's supposed to have significant point force there, something 400 pounds tugging at three quarters of a mile and everything's still intact and still in rigged. And what's, what's I think is more impressive is the fish was still attached. Like I said, we tried and tested the inline rigging system. And if that's not a story that proves that it worked, I don't know what would be. We're pretty happy with it so far, taking multiple world records with it. If you have more questions about the inline rigging system, email me. We've got some tools for you. We've got, if you have your own homemade pole spear or something like that, we've got tools that you can connect to that that'll help you be successful with pursuing blue water hunting with a pole spear. So check out gatku.com. I have tools there that are going to make blue water hunting with a pole spear a lot easier. The G-string, for one, is part of the full Monty package, which is a resting tab. So it pretty much holds your pole spear in a semi-loaded position for you so that you could rest your hand while you're holding your breath. Um, so that's something that we, we developed, came up with, uh, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago. And I, it's one of those things you use and you never go back the old-fashioned way. Other things there to consider are the Big Game Bungee and the Hardcore Band. If you have a special length that you'd like me to make for you, you know, reach out to me. If you have a custom spear, homemade spear that you made, and you know, let me know about the, uh, the diameter or approximate weight or length of the spear or draw length of the spear, and I could make you a custom band. Just contact me. We'll, we'll help you out with that. Also, ChrisSpears.com. Uh, bigger blue water spears. You've got the Zeus on there, which is nine feet. Like I said, you've got some some choices to make with 18, 24, 30 inch injector rods for that slip tip. And I would advise you to go towards a 30 inch if you're using it for blue water. The longer you can get as far as extension goes in front of your loaded hand, the better. Um, contact me, Dustin at gatku.com. If I could help you out with anything, answer any questions, lead you in the right direction. Thanks for listening. Well, that does it for this episode of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Big thank you to Dustin for taking the time out of his day to do this Blue Water Pole Spearing Clinic. 
If you have Instagram, definitely follow them. It's at Gatku Pole Spears and at Chris Spears. Shoot them a note, say thanks. And if you are in the mood to bring in this new year with a new pole spear, definitely check out gatku.com and use promo code John J O N Cast and Spear. And Dustin will throw in a few goodies with any pole spear purchase, so can't beat that. Well, keep those lines tight, everyone. Let's make 2019 epic. See ya. <laughs>